it turns out that there's a lot of interesting things that go on in kinetics. And if we're going to go further, we have to have some more terminology to work with. So reaction order. This is always experimentally determined. You can't tell just by looking at the equation and it will define the dependence of the reaction rate on the concentration of a reactant. A rate constant, this is going to serve as a proportionality constant so that you will be able to uh, relate the rate to the concentration because the rate has time in it, the concentration doesn't. And the units here are going to depend upon the order of the reaction. A rate law is going to be an equation that tells you how the rate compares to what was being put in. And here's your numbers for orders, okay, reaction order. Then overall reaction order is the sum of those exponents up here, M and N. We must have had A and B combining here, right? Because we're talking about the concentration, the rate of the reaction. It sounds like A and B should be involved. They must be what's combining. And this, an overall equation just tells us what we started with, what we ended with. The normal chemical equation, we're talking about the substances that are being consumed and the ones that are being produced. And it tells us through the stoichiometric coefficients how many of each are needed or how many of each are created but it doesn't tell us anything about how it happened. So even though I see something like this, and I might surmise that, you know, we have A plus B becoming C, I'm not sure exactly whether that is what's happening or not. And when I see the M and N, then I start wondering, does that mean that this is M and this is N? Not in general. This is what I expected but it turns out to be not true. So why does that happen? It's because we don't know the order in which things have to happen for these to combine. We have no idea from any particular equation which molecules are colliding, which bonds are breaking, what bonds are forming, and the order in which that happens. That is the basis of kinetics, is to try to figure out how those things are happening. Now, for an analogy on this, I would, I would talk about Legos. You have a lovely set that you put together and you've created this Lego construction and you're very happy with it, but you've decided that you want to make something else. You could take every single one of these Legos apart from each other and then put all of them together again in the new configurations. However, if you looked at the two things, you might say, oh, look, this one has this particular base. Oh, I'm gonna use the same base over here. Why would I take it all apart if I'm going to just use it again over here? So if you think about some of the stuff that we did earlier, where we were talking about nitrogen monoxide being turned into nitrogen dioxide, there's no reason to take that nitrogen and oxygen apart. No, you just need to add another oxygen to it. 